Spider-Man, as a character, has had some cinematic ups and downs. And by that, I mean roller coaster ups and downs. Some of the best superhero movies and some of the worst. However, I'm getting ahead of myself. Today, I'm going through the Spider-Man movies and deciding if they're good, if they're bad, if they need more dance sequences, everything. Let's start. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can. So in 2002, superhero movies weren't that huge. There'd been four Superman movies, four Batman movies, and one X-Men movie. And that was more or less it. Spider-Man changed all that. It easily became the highest grossing superhero movie, and at the time was the seventh highest grossing movie of all time. And this movie is pretty great. Now, I was too young to see this movie in theaters when it came out, but I can only imagine that the web swinging for the first time was mind-blowing. When I watched it on my TV, it was awesome. So seeing it on the big screen could only have been amazing. All the other special effects are great, and for the most part, hold up pretty well. Tobey Maguire, while not as funny as I would have liked, is great as Peter Parker, and Willem Dafoe plays one of the greatest villains in superhero movies. Kirsten Dunst is really good as Mary Jane, and early days James Franco plays Harry Osborn really well. In fact, this was James Franco's first big blockbuster as far as I know. This movie was the first film that told the origin story of Peter Parker, and so at that point we weren't all sick and tired of it, and it was actually an interesting premise. Complaints? Well, for one, not all the special effects hold up. Peter Parker at one point looks like he's made of rubber, but since it came out 15 years ago, I think that can be forgiven. Also, as mentioned, Peter Parker, or at least Spider-Man, isn't funny or wisecracking like he is in the comics, but the film does choose the right times to add a bit of humor so it doesn't ruin a scene. That's a cute outfit. Did your husband give it to you? My last complaint is that the movie is kind of dated. Like, the whole drawing montage makes you remember, yeah, this came out in 2002. But you know what? Those are almost nothing complaints. This was, overall, an awesome start to the franchise. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can. So this is where things peaked. Spider-Man 2 is easily one of the best superhero movies ever made. Everything I mentioned for Spider-Man 1 is taken that much further in this one. The villain, the characters, the action, the plot, everything is taken up a notch. And the notch was already pretty high. Let's start with the villain. Dr. Octopus is amazing in this movie. Willem Dafoe was great as Green Goblin, say that three times fast, but he was a bit over the top. Alfred Molina is perfect in this role. And the great thing is, you actually sympathize with his character. The action in the movie is so exciting and engaging and just all around spectacular. The fight on the clock tower and then eventually on the train is the best fight scene in any superhero movie in my opinion. The web swinging is top notch and in this one all the action holds up really well. This movie won the Oscar for best visual effects and correct me if I'm wrong but is this the only Marvel movie to win an Oscar? Anyway it definitely deserved it. My last point is the story. The story in this one is really interesting. Sure it has the Doc Ock story but it also has Peter Parker's internal conflict about whether he wants to be a hero or not, his problems with Mary Jane that come from that, and best of all his conflict with Harry Osborn which is one of the best parts of the movie. Also like the first movie this one finds the right time to add in humor to break it up a bit. Cool Spidey outfit. Thanks. Something that later Spidey films have failed at. Alright, enough with the compliments. It's time for... Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can. Spider-Man 3. Alright, I have some unpopular opinions here. I actually don't think Spider-Man 3 is that bad. Now, just stay with me here. If you take away Venom, Gwen Stacy, and maybe a bit of that emo Peter Parker dancing, you have a pretty good film. Let's take a look at the good stuff. Firstly, the Green Goblin. Because the relationship between Harry and Peter was already established, when Harry became the Green Goblin, it was actually interesting. And speaking Speaking of which, the fight between Peter Parker and Harry around the buildings was amazing. Not quite up there with the train fight, but still pretty awesome. Also, when Spider-Man and Sam Man fight by the train, that was really cool. Man, if you want to avoid fighting this guy, just stay away from trains. When the Sam Man became Sandy, at least before the finale, that looked really good. And the scene where Sam Man is transforming and he's trying to reach out for the picture of his daughter, that scene is one of the best scenes in all of superhero movies. And yeah, that's the good. Now the bad. First off, the small problem, Gwen Stacy. She just shouldn't have been in the movie. Now the big problems. Too many villains. This movie basically has four villains. New Goblin, Sandman, Venom, and Spider-Man's internal problems with the symbiote. This could have worked, but it just didn't. Which leads me to my next problem, which is this thing. Yes, Venom. Venom is one of my favorite supervillains, and the same can be said for a lot of people. But he's a villain worthy of being the one and only villain in a movie. He was literally in the film for about 10 minutes. That's like if in The Dark Knight, the Joker just shows up for the last couple minutes, punches Batman, and gets killed. I'll give the movie this. Venom looked really cool, but that that's it. If Venom had been cut from this movie entirely along with the symbiote thing, this would have been on par with the first Spider-Man. Also, speaking of Venom, the last fight scene isn't all that great, and Sandman looks... 
well he looks like that and finally of course there is the emo peter parker thing and the dancing scene which i myself have made fun of in this very video but i'm just gonna be honest when i saw that for the first time it was hilarious just in the middle of this serious movie this guy starts doing just the lamest dance moves ever if it wasn't the movie's intention to make me laugh then i guess that's points off and while it was a little bit abrupt and kind of detracted a bit from the overall tone of the movie i thought it was funny i'm not saying spider-man 3 is a great movie i'm just saying i think it gets way more hate than it deserves maybe i'm crazy now there's the original trilogy great awesome you know what not that bad all things considered but while i might have enjoyed spider-man 3 most everyone else didn't which is completely understandable so sony did what studios do the best and rebooted it spider-man spider-man does whatever a spider can I was genuinely surprised that The Amazing Spider-Man was not a complete train wreck. The film was not made because the director and the studio had a great story to tell or wanted to make a great Spidey movie. They did it so they could keep the rights to the character. And so I was surprised to find out that it was actually pretty good. It isn't as good as the first two, but it's quite a bit better than Spider-Man 3. I know opinions are mixed on this movie. Sure, there are varying tones, and because it's going for the realistic feel, a giant lizard man seems out of place. But besides that, this is a pretty great time, and it has some of the best web swinging to date. Emma Stone and Andrew Garfield have great chemistry. Andrew Garfield, as I've said time and time again, is the best Spider-Man. Just let me go. That's that a right. Knife? Oh, is that okay. a real knife? Yes, it's a real knife. My weakness. No, not a knife. Just let me go. Have you picked up a knife? Oh. oh, it's so simple. So is this movie perfect? Not at all. But is it a pretty cool movie with great action and really good and likable lead characters? Yeah. So this movie really was a tipping point. Was Spider-Man going to become a great franchise again or would it descend into darkness? Spider-Man, Spider-Man does whatever a spider can. The Amazing Spider-Man 2. I know the talking about this movie isn't that new. Hundreds of people have already ranted about it, including myself. But let me address it for hopefully the last time. Firstly, what was good with this movie? Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone still have great chemistry. The web switch again is great. Spider-Man looks more comic accurate than he ever has. And, spoiler alert for The Amazing Spider-Man 2, the scene where Gwen Stacy died, I'll go on record saying it was one of the best Spider-Man scenes. However, that doesn't change the fact that the rest of this movie is frankly pretty terrible. Without going over every point I've gone over before, the basic gist of it is that they took everything that was bad about Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3, and the reboot, and they tripled it. More cheesy dialogue. Now it's time for me to light my candles! More villains, more tonal problems, more Peter's parents, which no one has ever cared about. I will give it this, there's no dancing. Good job. But everything else is just bad. Electro didn't even look that great. He looked like if Dr. Manhattan was a PlayStation 3 character. I actually kinda liked the rhino suit, but Paul Giamatti, who I've loved in other things, literally played a cartoon. Dane DeHaan, who otherwise is a pretty good actor, was completely wasted. And speaking of DeHaan and his character, the Green Goblin has no buildup. Considering what a good job the previous movies did, this one just seems so lazy. Fight scenes literally go down to dubstep. Peter Parker discovers a secret train by throwing a calculator at the wall and finding, like, what? Magic coins or something? God. And Jamie Foxx's Electro played Jim Carrey's Riddler only more cartoony. Jamie Foxx played a character more cartoony than Jim Carrey could. Have those words ever been spoken in the English language before? No. I certainly hope not. In all seriousness, despite what I just said, this movie isn't that terrible. Would I recommend you see it? Absolutely not. But it isn't the worst film I've ever seen. I wouldn't even say it's one of the worst superhero movies I've ever seen. If you love this movie, that's great. I think it's great that you can get enjoyment out of something that I myself can't. So that was the best and worst of Spider-Man in film. What is your favorite and least favorite Spidey movie? Leave your picks in the comments. Hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like the one you just watched. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.